Welcome to your October guide to the Southern Hemisphere night sky. This month is a little bit of everything. Planets you can spot after sunset, deep sky objects to explore with a telescope, and even a rare comet making its way through our skies. Whether you're just scanning with binoculars, hunting planets, or taking photos of the night sky, October is full of things worth looking up for. We're starting off with a rare visitor from the outer solar system, Comet C-2025 R2 Swan. If it survives this trip, it won't be back in the inner solar system for another 20,000 years. After passing closest to the Sun on September 12th, it developed a striking corkscrew-shaped iron tail that stretches about 5 degrees across the sky, roughly the length of 10 full moons. Right now, it's around magnitude 6, so binoculars will give you the best view. Look low on the western horizon just after sunset, near Mars and Spiker in the Virgo, to help you spot it. As it gets closer to Earth, it may brighten to around magnitude 4, potentially visible to the naked eye under dark skies. The closest approach happens on October 19th, just 0.261 astronomical units from Earth. But don't worry if you can't make that exact night, October 18th to the 21st should give nearly the same view. And because comets can surprise us with sudden changes in brightness or appearance, we'll be keeping a close eye on the swan and post an update right before the best viewing nights. The comet will continue moving through Libra, Scorpius and Sagittarius before fading in early November, so there's plenty of time to catch a glimpse as it travels across the sky. This month we've got a great chance to see Mercury. On October 29th it reaches its greatest elongation, which is when it's at its furthest distance from the sun in our sky. That makes it ideal time to observe the planet. Greatest elongation is kind of like the inner planet's version of opposition. It's not exactly when the planet looks largest, but it's when it's easiest to see because it's farthest from the sun in our sky. And don't stress if you can't observe on the 29th. While these events are often listed as a single date, the reality is you can usually get nearly the same view up to a week before or after about 90% as good. So even if you missed the peak, you haven't missed out. Speaking of opposition, Saturn's opposition has already passed, but right now might actually be the better time to observe it. Why? Even though the planet is slightly smaller than last month, it rises earlier in the evening, which makes it easier to see for anyone who wants to avoid a really late night. The best viewing window is still a bit late between 10 p.m. and midnight, but you can get a good look anytime after the sunset. Look towards the northeastern sky and Saturn should be fairly easy to spot. Neptune is back alongside Saturn this month. If your scope is big enough, around 6 inches or more, you can spot it. There's not a lot to see on Neptune itself, but if you're already looking at Saturn, why not swing your scope over to the furthest planet on our solar system while you're at it? Like Saturn, Neptune is best observed between 10pm and midnight, but you'll be able to see it at any time after sunset. And if you're up late, this is also a good month to check out Uranus. With enough aperture, you'll see a tiny grey-blue disc. This one is really only for the dedicated planet hunters though, since the best time to observe it is between 1 and 3am when it's positioned highest in the sky. This month, one of the highlights of the southern sky is the small Magellanic Cloud, or SMC for short. Don't let the name fool you, there's nothing really small about this galaxy. This satellite galaxy of the Milky Way stretches about 4 degrees across the sky, which is roughly 8 full moons side by side. And being a satellite galaxy, it orbits our Milky Way, much in the same way that the moon orbits the Earth. The SMC is exclusively visible from the southern hemisphere, and it's one of the farthest objects you can see with the naked eye, about 200,000 light years away. In a dark sky, you'll see it as a diff small diffused patch to the south. Binoculars make it stand out more, and a telescope lets you resolve some of the galaxy's structure and brighter regions. Inside the SMC is a personal favorite, NGC 346. With binoculars, it shows up as a bright patch near the tail of the galaxy. But with a telescope six inches or larger, you can start to make out some shape in the nebula. Observing a nebula inside another galaxy is a pretty amazing experience, and it's also a great target for astrophotography, whether you're using your own setup or a smart telescope. Because the SMC is so far south in the sky, you'll have plenty of time to observe it. It's reasonably well placed from around 8pm all the way until 4am, 
so you'll be able to observe it well all night. In a dark sky, it appears as a small diffuse patch towards the south in an otherwise fairly empty area of the sky. You'll be able to enjoy the small Magellanic Cloud from now all the way until December. Another deep sky gem this month is the Helix Nebula, also known more dramatically as the Eye of God Nebula. It's one of the closest planetary nebulae to Earth, which makes it large enough to reveal considerable detail through a telescope, and also a solid target for astrophotography with small refractors or smart telescopes. Through the eyepiece, you'll notice an eye-like shape staring right back at you. Using a UHC filter can help boost the contrast and bring out even more detail. Planetary nebulae like the helix form during the final stages of a medium-sized star's life. When a star similar to our sun runs out of fuel, it sheds its outer layers, creating an expanding shell of glowing gas. This hot core left behind, a white dwarf, emits ultraviolet radiation that excites the surrounding gas, making it glow. While planetary nebulae aren't rare in the galaxy, the helix stands out because it's one of the closest and brightest, making its structure and details easier to observe. The Helix Nebula is another quintessentially southern object. While it technically is observable from the northern hemisphere, they don't get to see it quite like we do, as we get to see it rise right overhead in the night sky. You'll find the Helix Nebula in the constellation Aquarius, and it's best observed between 8 to 10 p.m., when it's at its highest in the night sky. That brings an end to this month's guide to the night sky. October offers an incredible variety of observing opportunities for southern hemisphere stargazers. From a rare visitor from the outer solar system, Comet C2025 R2 Swan, to observing nebulae in another galaxy, there's something for every type of observer.